So did you run into any problems because you are a woman in STEM when you were starting, when you were working on your, all your way through your career? Have you encountered any issues because you were a woman and because you were an immigrant? Absolutely, absolutely. And a lot, perhaps it's not intentionally, a lot may, might be implicit bias, but just as I said uh, the other day, even my name, even my name, because uh, my name is a Latin name, it's, and it really uh, shows like there is a break. When I apply to a job, if I have a name that is Latin, they think that maybe my education wasn't here. And in fact, my education was here, but just my name itself doesn't, doesn't allow me to, for instance, apply to big jobs. And uh, also uh, other implicit bias are, uh, has my accent. My accent not necessarily is Canadian. I didn't master, I'm here 25 years, I didn't master this Canadian accent, but that doesn't mean that I'm not, in, I'm not capable of doing my job. I'm capable, I might not have that accent, the Canadian accent, but I am, I am my uh, um, accreditation is as another Canadian here. So yes, and uh, through my uh, journey from undergrad all the way here, I every single time I had a lot of problems, a lot of like uh, uh, difficulties, and yeah, I can. I, it will take a long <laughs> meeting to tell you all the things that I I face here. So briefly, what brought you to Squist? Um, actually, I got invited by Christine. Uh, we connected through Twitter, and it's, it happens sometimes that you always get surrounded by people that are actively working towards changing the mindsets of people, especially uh, trying to encourage uh, women in science. So uh, Christine invited me to give a talk uh, in one of the series of the Brown Bags, and that's how I connected. That's how I started knowing uh, it was through Christine. And how does it feel to go to a Squist meeting? I mean, it's fascinating because I, before, even though I'm here for a long time in Canada, I'm going through, I uh, would say, um, a lot of like personal problems in, as a woman, as a minority in STEM, I never had the support and I never knew about those. And now I see that this, uh, I can see many women going through the same journey as I did, but also there's a personal connection, personal stories, you're not alone. And most important thing, there's always somebody that is willing to help you and understand you. It sounds like you're very, very busy, but what was your role within Squist or what has it been? So I think in most of, because it's a personal passion and because I went through so many things myself, I just don't want uh, people, new immigrants, new women to go through the same journey. So I want to eliminate these barriers. So one of the ways that I help is like amplifying the messages and all the initiatives that Swiss uh, brings. And uh, I invite other people to join. I uh, highlight them. And I always like amplifying and saying how Swiss is here to help women. So like Christine recruited you, you're recruiting others. Other ones, yes, absolutely. And tell me a bit about yourself, very briefly. What's your background and um, how did you come to where you are now? Was it just a direct line? You decided at high school age, this is what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, and it just worked out? Actually, I was... Uh, so. And right now I am a mucosal immunologist uh, with background in just diseases. Actually, my first uh, idea to enter into science is because I wanted to be a paleontologist. But then when I uh, had, a, uh, during undergrad, I went to do a internship at one uh, university in, in Peru and I trained with Dr. Robert Gilman from Hopkins. And uh, at this point in 1991, we have one of the worst uh, cholera epidemics in Peru. And when I saw people, especially kids, dying and having diseases, 
that changed me a lot. And that's when I start focusing in initiatives that will save lives. And I become, uh, then I got a master's in uh, molecular biology, but uh, molecular epidemiology of facial diseases. And eventually I had a PhD in uh, microbiology and immunology. That's the same as my husband. He's an immunologist, microbiologist. Um, so what's your message for Squist on its 40th anniversary and what's your hopes for its future? I wish uh, Swiss as a, it's a fantastic, um, uh, we'll say group of women at, and uh, it's, it's doing a fantastic job, obviously 40 years across the country, but I wish I, wish I could see uh, Swiss more expanded nationally I wish we could actually have more, uh, we'll say, representation in terms of uh, women from different uh, backgrounds, immigrant women. And also, it would be really good to start inviting men to see, because we women didn't create the problem. And so we need a lie. And I think it would be nice to have a group of men to understand how and to see how valuable are those groups of men. So we need allies. So I will, I will see Swiss uh, expand to nationally more immigrants and perhaps more allies. And lastly, um, you were nominated, you were one of the finalists for the YWCA Women of Distinction Awards. Can you tell me the category and how it felt to be recognized? You were in some pretty august company. I was. This is, um, I honestly never, never expected to be there. And uh, against uh, this wonderful uh, women, fantastic company. I know I, it was a surprise. Uh, it was, it's beautiful, I guess, to be recognized because I do this myself because I love helping people but when there's people that are actually recognizing your work it's another uh, I guess people are paying attention so that also means that it's a commitment to continue doing that and yeah it was it was fabulous it was great it was a fantastic celebration for other for many women here in in Metro Vancouver, and uh, yeah, it's fascinating and encouraging, and yeah, it's it's good. It's good for the younger generations. So my category was in health and and wellness. Thank you, Janet. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Lorraine.